Hi, my name is Rachel Corbett, and in this video, I wanna share with you some tips on how to be a third year medical student in the operating room. The information in this video is based on my experience as a student at the Medical College of Georgia, along with some feedback that I got from my fellow classmates, surgeons, and residents that I've worked with. So let's get started. First, let's cover what you should do when you get into the operating room. Before you walk into an operating room, you should go ahead and put on a mask. You can put tape at the top of your mask to keep it down if you notice that the mask tends to slide up and poke your eyes or your glasses. Once inside, introduce yourself to anyone in there and let them know that you are a medical student on the case. Write your name and medical student or MS3 on the whiteboard if there is one. If you're gonna be scrubbing into the case, you are responsible for getting gloves in your size. Before you get your gloves, make sure you've checked to see whether or not your patient has a latex allergy. You should also ask the scrub tech if you need to go get a gown for yourself. Gloves and gowns are often stored in a separate storage room, so if you don't know where they are, ask someone to help you find them. Once you get your gown and your gloves, you will need to pass them off to the scrub tech, who will either take them from you or help you open them using sterile technique. Expect to scrub in for every case that you're assigned, but if you're not sure, ask the resident or attending if you can scrub in for that case. If you're still in doubt, go ahead and make sure that you already have your gown and your gloves ready. Before the patient comes to the OR, you can find them in the pre-op area. If you don't have other obligations at that time, you can hang out in the pre-op area with the patient. And then when you see that the patient is being transported, you can text the resident that the patient is moving to the operating room. Once the patient is in the room, go ahead and put on some gloves. You can help move the patient from the stretcher to the operating bed. Make sure that any IV lines or monitoring devices stay attached to the patient. Once the patient is safely positioned, you can roll the stretcher to outside of the operating room, usually against the wall right outside of the door. Once the stretcher is back outside, you can come back in the room and help further set up the patient. It may be helpful to just watch it first and then be proactive about asking how you can help. At least stand close by with some gloves on. Some examples of things that I've helped with include removing or attaching armrests to the table, putting the sequential compression devices or SCDs on the patient's legs, plugging them in and turning them on, always keeping any cords like pulse socks, peripheral IVs and EKG leads out of the way and untangled, attaching the bear hugger into the blanket and turning it on, putting Velcro straps and belts around the patient's body and arms or legs, putting the bovi pad on the patient's hip and connecting it to the machine. Some things are usually done after the patient is asleep. If the surgeon is shaving an area of the patient's body, you can use tape to pick up the hairs as they go. If a Foley will be needed, you can ask the circulating nurse if you can be the one who places it. Once the surgery starts, here's what you need to know. If no one tells you when to scrub in, once you see the resident or attending leave the OR to scrub in, you can follow them and scrub as well. Be sure you have already given your gloves and gown to the scrub tech and put on eye protection, either a mask with a shield or disposable glasses before you scrub. When the surgeon is draping the patient, you can be an extra set of hands, but people do it differently and draping was an easy way to accidentally become unsterile. So I usually didn't help with draping too much unless I had seen it plenty of times before and I was super confident for how it was done. The scrub techs may hand you the sterile covers for the OR light handles though, and those are easy to put on the lights. During surgery, always try to get the best view of the operating field without getting in the way. If you don't know where to stand, just ask. What you'll physically be doing during the surgery depends on what type of surgery it is and the surgeon you're working with. And some surgeons allow medical students to be more hands-on than others. Be ready to do whatever is asked of you and make sure you have a good view. And don't do something if you can't see the operating field or the tools clearly. One of the things that I'm regularly asked to do as a medical student during surgery is retracting. This happens when the surgeon positions the retractor to pull tissue out of the way and you hold the retractor in that exact position. Another thing I've been asked to do is apply tension. To do this, you use the pads of your fingers to kind of pull the tissue away from where they are making the incision or dissecting through layers of fascia. Medical students are also asked to suction. Know where the suction machine is at all times. You can use it to suction blood or any other fluid where the surgeons are working. Also, if the room needs to be quiet for a moment, you can bend the suction tube to silence the sound of the machine. You can also use the suction to get the smoke that rises whenever someone is using cautery. In addition to suctioning, you can use lap sponges to dab blood out of the way when surgeons are suturing or cutting something. When using these, it's important that you're not getting in the way. When they are reloading a suture needle or grabbing something from the scrub tech, that's probably a good time to get in there. During laparoscopic surgeries, you may be asked to drive the camera. Make sure the surgeon has a clear, full view of wherever he or she is working. And once you get to a good spot, 
keep it as still as you can. If someone else is suturing, you can go ahead and ask the scrub tech for suture scissors. You'll either cut the string on the knot, you'll leave short tails on the knot, or you may cut one of the strings. Ask if you're not sure. During your surgery rotation, suturing is an opportunity for you to be proactive about participating. The most common time for students to suture something is at the end of the case when the skin is being closed. At the end of the case, ask if you can help close or if you can throw a stitch. Sometimes at the end of the case, they're really rushed and you might be turned down. But I found that after asking once, on the next cases, they offered to let me suture since I had indicated that it was something that I wanted to do. For stapling, you'll probably be the one holding the staple gun while the resident or attending uses forceps to hold the skin on either side of the incision. Pulling the trigger on the staple gun requires a little more force than I expected, so keep that in mind. Also note that during surgery, it looks good to ask questions. Though, don't ask questions when the patient is bleeding, or the vitals are weird, or if someone in the room seems stressed. Save your questions for calmer parts of the case. If you're not scrubbed in for the case, there are still plenty of ways that you can help. You can help tie up gowns for the people who are scrubbing in. Be prepared to answer a resident or attending cell phone or pager if they go off. Sometimes they'll ask you to reach into the back pocket of their scrubs to get their phone out. I always try to have a pen and a slip of paper with me. Sometimes surgeons will ask you to write things down during surgery. Be prepared to look something up on the computer in the OR if a surgeon asks you to. You can also grab step stools for a surgeon if they need one. During slow parts of the surgery, you can talk to whoever is providing anesthesia and learn more about what they do. You can ask the scrub tech for a wet and a dry ray tech or lap sponge to clean blood and iodine off of the patient's surgical site. If there are staples attaching drapes to the patient, you can go ahead and ask the scrub tech for mosquito forceps to remove the staples. At the end of the surgery, some stuff goes in the trash, some goes in the linen, some goes in the sharps container, and some goes back to the scrub tech. As you're helping to clean and clear items and drapes away from the patient, ask where everything goes. Eventually you'll recognize what is thrown away and what is saved. As things are getting cleared away, you can move the stretcher back into the OR and position it next to the operating bed. Once the bed is in the right place, you can grab the patient transfer board with a towel or a cloth, which is sometimes called a chuck, over it and put it on the stretcher. Wait for the anesthesia team to give everyone the green light before you help move the patient. Someone will be by the feet, the anesthesia provider at the head, and one person on either side of the patient. The patient is first flipped away from the stretcher, the transfer board is slid under their body, and the patient is moved over the board to the stretcher. As the patient is being moved, make sure anything attached to them is still connected and not too tangled. Once the patient is moved back to the stretcher, you can grab one or two warm blankets to drape over the patient. If you don't know where the warm blankets are, ask the circulating nurse or resident where you can find them. You can stand by the bed and watch out for post-op delirium as the patient is waking up from anesthesia. You may have to help hold the patient's arms down if they start getting aggressive as they wake up. Make sure they don't pull out any IVs, pull off their oxygen mask, or disrupt whatever dressing was put over the surgical site. You can walk back to the PACU with the patient. Sometimes the patient's chart is left in the OR by mistake and you can run back to get it, or if the PACU nurse has a question, you are someone who can easily find the resident to get it answered. Here are some final points you should know. Masks are hard to hear through, so speak and ask questions loudly and confidently. Sometimes there truly isn't anything for you to do between cases. Use these moments to eat, grab a coffee, go to the bathroom, and review the notes and charts for your patients on the floor. But I think most importantly, talk to people. The nurses, techs, CRNAs, everyone has loads of experience in the OR and they are a wealth of information for you. The first couple cases, it's probably best to observe. Every OR is going to be slightly different and it's good to understand the flow before you jump in too much. If you're asked to do something, but you don't know how to do it, the correct response is something like, yes, I'd love to, but I've never done that before, so can you show me how? Never turn down any opportunity. I hope you've gotten a few tips for how to succeed in the OR during your surgery rotation. Good luck.